Hey, this is a match once again. We're about to end the videos of the paid request. This time for James. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for Coda, which I'll be honest, I'm sitting there going, the hell is Coda? But apparently, one a best picture Oscar shows how much I follow the Oscars. And it's one of those movies that. I thought it was pretty good for what it was, for what it needed to be. Pretty much, it doesn't seem like it from, if you looked at the general plot, if I read you the plot, it's, oh, there's a fishing business, this girl named Ruby, her parents and her older brother work the fishing business, they can't want her to be more part of the business, but then she wants to go out for choir. Gets with this eccentric, overzealous teacher in order to follow her dream of maybe making it as a senior while dealing with the predicaments of her parents and wanting to leave this place. The difference here is that her parents and her older brother are deaf. They're deaf mutes and... The actual actors are deaf as well. So many of the sequences are Ruby talking with her parents, her older brother, in sign language, which there's subtitles that you read, and the whole relationship between that family and how they rely on her too much. And she's like, this I can't be here all the time for you guys. And she wants to be there for her family. But at the same time, she wants to have a life of her own. And so on and so forth. The family deaf dynamics. And I know this is going to sound mean. It is a good film. I do think the reason it won the Oscar was because of that deaf thing. Because, you know, that's the thing that makes it unique compared to other films. Now, is that a bad thing? I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying... I mean, great, you can say that for a lot of other stuff, to be fair. That there's something about it that makes it more unique, thus gives a bit more attention, a bit more of that extra mile compared to other films that has a... seems like a similar plot. Now, granted, I thought the acting was pretty decent from the, the f everybody, for the most part. Uh, the parents and the older brother, you know, hire, hiring actual deaf people, so you could get their natural dynamics and what they deal with every day, and being natural in the sign language. Uh, some humor is involved with that, like the parents pull up to pick up Ruby and they're playing hip-hop. And she's just embarrassed, she turns it down, the look at her is like, We're turning up because we like music. <laughs> There's a bit where she's got to interpret for her parents that this doctor, and this doctor's like, you got to explain to them that this guy has jock itch and they can't do it for two weeks and, and stuff. So she kind of looks and is like, you guys can never do it ever. What, ever? Yeah. Forever, ever gone. Then she sees the reaction and is like, for two weeks. And then they both look at the doctor and they're saying, that's impossible. <laughs> Not for two weeks, but that's impossible. During choirs at school, there's this boy that she starts to like because they're going to be a duet. And she invites him over just to instantly to study and to look into what we need to do next. And so the parents invite the kid into the living room and the sign language about needing to wear a condom. And the father's like explaining, you know, the ideas of a condom and stuff. And you get the idea that maybe the, the boy, maybe the guy is getting the hint of it. <laughs> but just trying to be nice to not, uh, you know. 
Like he mines a soldier in a helmet and putting the helmet on. And oh, I would say the dad, who I believe did win an Oscar, for what he was limited to because of being deaf and being only do with sign language, I thought he was definitely a interesting personality. Uh, he was definitely, I thought, the most interesting in the family. The mom, for some reason, I just didn't like her. Just some of her reactions to certain things just seemed a bit oblivious and bitchy to what her daughter was. Until eventually she finds her crying and starts caressing her and her head and stuff. The child playing the older brother, he was fine. A lot of times he's on the phone. Sometimes being a bit confused what's going on. The girl, the lead girl plays Ruby. I thought she did fine. Duffy felt sorry for her predicament. You rooted for her. The teacher, Mr. V, I thought he was a bit too goofy. Um, I don't know where the guy is from. And let me get the actor's name. One second. That's Bernardo. Eugenio Derbys, a Mexican actor and comedian. The high school choir director. He seems to be like, at times a bit too eccentric, a bit too goofy, as if he's two shots away from being in the birdcage. And I don't know, like I guess they want him to be just this wild, crazy, eccentric guy, but just I don't know if he always fit with either the tone of the film or I don't know, he just at times just annoyed me. And I kinda wish there was someone who toned it down a bit or was maybe a bit more subtle. You still have humor, you still have, but maybe a bit more subtle type of humor would have, I would have appreciated more. You know, I'm meditating. I got two minutes to go. Okay, fine. I will, we'll waste those two minutes. So it's going through this, the family dynamics and her dealing with the fishing business, but which is going up the creek without a paddle. They're trying to make ends meet and like they literally have to pay $800 to someone to purposely be a spy for them because the, the whole union of the, the fishing game is going up <laughs> up the creek and then they try to start their own thing was is isn't going the best and then there's a point where Ruby isn't there because she's busy doing her school stuff. So the others go out fishing with this representative and they, being deaf, they can't hear anything. So then they get their license, fishing license suspended. And then chunk of the family blame her and she freaks out about it. But I did like the older brother. He kind of like, it's not your fault, and, you know, you, people say you could sing, you need to follow through on that. Yeah, but you guys need me. Well, you know what? We're, we're, we're able to manage before you were born, and all the day, years you were a baby. Which then, if that's the case, then I would have preferred if the brother confronted the parents. Like, both of them. Like, the parents. Like, him sticking up for his sister in front of the parents. Like, especially that scene when she's getting yelled at about the suspended fishing license. Like, where were you then to, to help her out and say it wasn't her fault? No, instead you say it afterwards. But things quickly go okay. They, uh, even though they technically can't hear, the dad wants her to sing for for him, and he holds his hands to her throat. And I mean, he's going to choke her. No, she sings, and he can feel the vibrations. And it's a touching, heartwarming scene with the way 
uh, Choi Katsur, who plays Frank, the father, the way he reacts, and the way they, they hug and stuff. It's a sweet bit of a story there. And then the audience, and even though they can't hear it, they see that she's singing, she's happy, and they like that. And they quickly realize that, hey, you know, this is what their daughter wants, and they're supportive of her. People in the fishing business, they start learning a bit of sign language. So the business is going okay. She drops off the Berkeley, says I love you, goes away, and the movie ends. And like it's a it's a sweet enough movie. There's not a whole lot that I really had problems with other than I thought the Mr. V's director was a bit too zany for my liking. Like I said, considering like the rest of the movie and the tone, he seemed like like from a different film. And believe me, I I, I like those type of hell Hollywood from Manitian, but Manitian is a very different type of movie compared to Coda. But I mean, it's like the father and the older brother. I didn't mind them. The mother, I was a bit indifferent on. I mean, I don't know if it, it deserved an... What did it win, Oscar-wise? I know it was nominated for stuff. What did it win? I'm trying to find it. So it won Best Picture, Best Supporting Actor, and Best Adapted Screenplay. I mean, I don't know if the screenplay is really Oscar-worthy. Because you look at the screenplay, like, if you take... I mean, I know it sounds stupid to say take out the dev part, because that's what makes the film what it is. But I'm just saying, with the, the characters and the, the dialogue and stuff, I don't know if it's an Oscar-worthy screenplay. I mean... I appreciate what it does for the deaf community. I'll give you that. I did Amelia Jones as Ruby. I thought she was likable enough. The movie shot fine enough. They had no issues with that. Uh, I, I don't know if I really felt too much of the turmoil, the drama, because it still felt like even within those, you kind of figured everything would work out fine. I never really felt like Ruby was in trouble or in dire straits. Does the father seem like a decent guy as he, you know, should be? And you know, the love interest that Ruby gets is like, uh, whatever. I could take or leave it. Kind of indifferent to it. Like there's a part where, you know. Before the whole helmet thing, they had overheard their the parents having sex. Of course, they don't know because they're deaf, so they don't know. They can't hear anybody. So apparently, that guy told other people, and they mocked it. So of course, she's pissed at him. And then he doesn't really give much of a good explanation as to why he did that, which to me would be like fine. She never talked to you again, but then she does. It's like oh whatever. At least it was one of those fin films that I'm watching, and I'm not minding it. I'm not minding the film. You know, the most of the parts of the family, the fact that you know that this conversation is all done in sign language. It makes it at least feel a bit different. Does it feel too? That part, at least, makes it feel a bit more unique compared to other films. But at the same time, would this film ever? Will I remember this film in the long run? Eh, probably not. Is this a film I'm going to remember throughout the years? No. Except maybe the deaf community. 
I appreciate what it did though. I do. I, I appreciate what it did. I appreciate what it's trying to do. And I still felt the, the inner sweetness of it. And I think at the end of the day, that's why I don't mind it. It has a good heart on its shoulder. It has a good heart on its sleeves. And it means well. It's not pedantic. It's not trying to be woke or anything. It just, I feel like it's a movie where his heart is in the right place. And that's why it was a nice little movie. It was a nice, sweet little movie that, you know, I don't have, like, a lot of deep, deep issues on it. Oh, it's overrated. How dare it? I mean, it won Best Picture. Cool. Are there other films that should have won? I don't know. I don't remember all the films that came out in 2021. Am I mad that it won? Eh, nah. I mean, it's the Oscars. I don't give a crap about the Oscars anyway. I don't think most people in the real world care anyway. But it is what it is. It's... It's a nice sweet little film. I know it's not much of a review, but it, it's one of those that's a bit hard for me to, to talk about where like the plot itself seems like something you've other the death part is what makes the film what it is. How much of that is a big deal is gonna be up to you. If it's not that much of a big deal, then I don't know if the rest of it's really going to be that. You know, other than, okay, the, I like the father character. He's a bit funny and sweet at times. But there's not a whole lot else that really got me going to the movie where I was just incredibly invested in it, if that makes sense. But I liked it, you know, it was what it was, and I didn't mind it. Say it therefore you will. So, with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.